Hey guys, welcome to Safi Mixed. In this video, I will discuss the physics of free particles in the domain of quantum mechanics and will point out some conceptual difficulties in the understanding of physics related to the wave function of such a particle. We know from the perspective of Newtonian mechanics that a free particle is one that experiences zero net force and we further know that the absence of force makes the physics of a free particle very easy in the realm of Newtonian mechanics. On the other hand, in quantum mechanics, instead of force, we use potential or potential energy as a fundamental quantity and describe the dynamics of quantum particles in term of potential energy. You may recall from my videos on bound states that for a quantum mechanical free particles the potential energy is zero. With this concept in mind, let us first write down the one-dimensional time-independent Schrodinger wave equation along x-axis for a particle of mass m. And we know the one-dimensional Schrodinger wave equation is of this form, where vx is the time-independent one-dimensional potential energy of the particle. For a free particle, obviously Vx is zero, therefore setting Vx zero into this equation, it straight away reduces to this one form. Now we can arrange this equation into another very useful form by first taking the right side into the left side and then multiplying the whole equation with minus 2m divided by h bar and we can write it then into this form. I want to put this equation into a more easily handling form by defining a quantity k such that k square equal to 2m e divided by h bar square and let me uh, tell you that e in this case is the total energy of the free particle. This definition obviously changed the form of the equation into this form that is d square psi of x divided by dx squared plus k squared plus k squared psi of x equal to zero. Equation 2 describes the dynamics of a free quantum mechanical particle that is its solution leads to the wave function for free particles. But before coming to the solution, let us first discuss the physics of equation 1. From equation 1, we can straight away establish the relation for total energy as E equals h bar squared k squared divided by 2m and using the de Broglie relation for momentum which is given by P equals h bar times k we can put the equation into E equals P squared divided by 2m which is obviously the classical equation for kinetic energy Equation 3 in connection with de Broglie relation verifies that the k in equation 1 stands for the wave vector of Schrodinger wave. And we know that wave vector should always be a real quantity. With reference to equation 3, this is possible only when e is greater than 0. Otherwise, taking square root of equation 3 for finding k would make it an imaginary quantity. It is worth noting that this condition on E shows that the energy of a free particle is always positive. 
Now let us turn our attention back to equation 2 and write the roots equation for it, which takes the form d squared plus k squared equal to 0 and solving it for d results in d equals plus minus iota k. And we know from our courses in differential equations that each root of a differential equation corresponds to a separate solution. So there are two possible solutions to equation 2, one for each value of d. It is straightforward to verify by substituting in equation 2 that two exponential function of the form exponent plus iota k times x and exponent minus iota k times x correctly satisfied the equation and thus are the solution to it. That is, we can write down the two solutions in the form psi1 of x equals a1 exponent iota k times x and psi2 of x equals a2 times exponent minus iota k times x. Note that in the rest of this video, I will refer to these two equations as equation g. An equation g a1 and A2 are our battery constants which may be complex. The general solution to equation 2 can be written as a linear superposition of these two solutions and can be expressed in the form psi of x equals a one times exponents iota k times x plus A2 exponents minus iota k times x. We also know from our videos on Schrodinger wave equation that the total solution of Schrodinger wave equation is obtained by multiplying the position dependent part to this equation. So I can write the total solution to the Schrodinger wave equation in the form psi of x in t equals psi of x times f of t. where the time dependent part is explicitly given by f of t equals exponent minus iota e, e times t divided by h bar. With the help of equations 4 and 6, equation 5 becomes psi 1 of x in t equals a1 times exponents iota k times x plus a2 times exponent minus iota k times x, the whole multiplied with exponent minus iota e times t divided by h bar. Removing the brackets and putting the time dependent and position dependent arguments into a single argument in each term, I can modify the equation into this one form. And taking h bar common from the two terms, I can further modify it like uh, this one. And using the de Broglie relation, I can put finally it into this one form. That is, I can write the, the argument of each exponential in the form of total energy of the particle and the quantum momentum of the particles. Equation 7 is the total wave function for free particles. We can put this equation into another familiar form by using omega equals e divided by h bar and k equals p divided by h bar. That is, we can write the argument of the two exponentials in each term in terms of the wave vector and angular frequency and can put the equation very straight away into this form. Now from this form we see that each term in equation 8 represents a traveling wave with angular frequency omega and wave vector k. The first term shows a wave moving towards the right and the second term shows a wave moving towards the left. 
Now it's obvious that equation 8 is another form as total solution to the Schrodinger wave equation for free particles. Since there is no boundary conditions, therefore there is no restriction on the values of k. And in accordance to equation 3, one can say that there is no restriction on the value of energy E. This in turn means that there is no free quantum particle with definite energy. Or in other words, the energy spectrum of a free particle in quantum mechanics is continuous. So far everything is okay from mathematics point of view. But from physics point of view, you will see there are some issues with this total wave function. With that said, let's turn our attention to the issues with this equation, that is equation 8. We can directly show from equation 8 that the probability density of the particle is constant. But that involves a little mathematics, so I would like to make the calculation a bit easier and would like to find the individual probability density for each solution psi 1x and psi 2x in equation g. That is the probability density P1 equals psi 1 steric of x, psi 2 steric of x and I, if I substitute the values, I can put that into this one form and that obviously leads to the modulus square of A1. And similarly for the second wave function in equation G, I can write P2 equals psi 2 steric of x times psi 2 of x and substituting the values, it ultimately results into the modulus square of A2. These, the result of these probability mean that the probability densities P1 and P2 are independent both from the position x of the particle and from the time t of its observation. In other words, the wave function of equation G have somehow lost maintaining the information of both position and time of the particle. <coughs> this loss of information is by no way good. But let's uh, dig out the actual reason behind the loss of information of these two quantities from the two wave functions. Since both the wave functions psi 1x and psi 2x are specified with a well-defined value of wave vector k, this leads to a well-defined momentum according to the de Bray, de Bray momentum relation p equals h bar times k. In order to verify this claim, let us apply momentum operator to these wave function and I am picking psi 1x for that purpose. So applying momentum operator, I can write p operator applied to psi 1 of x equals minus iota h bar d by dx psi 1 of x and if I substitute the value of psi 1 of x, I can write it as minus iota h bar d by dx applied to exponent iota k times x and applying the differential operator d by dx to the exponent, I can further write it as minus iota h bar multiplied with iota times k multiplied with exponent iota k of x and I can straight away write that as h bar k exponent iota k x which can be written as h bar k times psi 1 x. Now according to the Broglie relation, p equals h bar k. This means that for a specific value of wave vector k, the wave function k is a well-defined momentum with zero uncertainty. 
and according to uncertainty principle the zero uncertainty and momentum results in complete loss of the information about position of the particles similarly according to equation 3 a well defined k also results in a well defined energy of the particle which makes time completely uncertain so the well defined k in the wave function psi x of t is responsible for the loss of information of position of the particle and the observation time of the position of the particle now let's move to another issue with the wave function the second issue with the two wave function in equation g is the disagreement between the speed of waves and the speed of particles the speed of a wave in terms of angular frequency omega and wave vector k is given by v sub w equals omega divided by k and put in the value of omega which is e divided by h bar i can write the result as e divided by h bar k we are the subscript with v stands for the velocity of wave this sometime is written as v sub p where p then represent phase velocity however for the present case i prefer to write it as w and now using the value of energy from equation 3 this velocity can be reduced to vw equals 1 over h bar k times h bar square k square divided by 2m and this can further be simplified into the form h bar k divided by 2m on the other hand the speed of a classical particle in terms of momentum is given by v sub p equals p divided by m here again the subscript p i am writing for particle and putting the value from de Broglie relation i can write this as h bar k divided by m now comparing equation 9 and 10 we see that the velocity of particle is twice the velocity of wave that is the particle is moving faster than the wave representing the particle so this is a disagreement between the two velocities which cannot be explained on the basis of wave function psi x in t the third issue with the two wave function in equation g is that they are not normalizable for example, consider the normalization of wave function psi 1 of x. I can write it as integral from minus infinity to plus infinity psi 1 of x steric times psi 1 of x d of x. And substituting the values, I can write it as a 1 steric exponent minus iota k time x, the whole multiplied with a 1 exponent iota k times x dx and that obviously can be written as a1 modulus square integral from minus infinity to plus infinity d of x which integrating and putting the value for x that would give us infinity so i can directly write it as a1 modulus square multiplied with infinity and anything multiplied with infinity goes to infinity that means the wave function cannot be normalized or the normalization is not definite this issue with the two wave functions psi 1x and psi 2 of x reveal there is something wrong either with the two wave functions or with the quantum mechanical approach of schrodinger wave equation or we are not handling the problem correctly obviously we need to search for an optimal solution to resolve these issues faced by the two wave functions so the question is is there any way out 
the answer is positive and yes there is but i will come to the answer in the second video on free particle